Well, I'm David Brill, um, and I'm, I'm here in Freising for lots of nice reasons, because me and Asya, my wife, we have a very beautiful exhibition in the gallery of Paolo, Paolo Moutinho and Santa Schroeder. And of course, I'm with, completely delighted that it looks the way it does. Um, and that we have these marvellous people who are, are our friends and, and helped us to, uh, to, to put on such a lovely show. And for, also for all the people that have come here to help you know, and and then also we're here because of the um, this uh, this uh, um, convention, and again, lots of wonderful people come a long way. And it's kind of feel we feel, kind of feel they come to see us, which is very nice. What uh, role does origami play in your life? What is the meaning of origami to you? A lot, really. Um, at the moment, I think it's. There's two sides. One is a social side, which is this. And the other is a, um, an expressive side, or a, an artistic side, or a, um, what should I say? Um, yeah, a means of expression also. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's very strange. It seems to me there's a, a private side and a, a social side. And for me, then, you know, they're, they're quite separate. And I think, you know, the, the, the work, the best work that's done is not really done at a convention like this. You can't, you, you learn techniques, you meet people. Uh, but it seems to me that, for me at any rate, I have to be, you know, in, in direct communication with the paper. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a conversation, if you like, with, with this thing that I've got. In, in my hands, and, you know, there's too many distractions at a, a meeting like this to do anything uh, particularly good. Occasionally, you have a spark of, or I, I have a spark of inspiration, but it's very rare because there's too many distractions. There's too many nice people to meet and uh, things going on that you want to take part in. So there are two sides. I think it's also as. There's another side, which is a sort of worldwide community, which I you know, firmly believe in, and the fact that origami has opened huge uh, boundaries for me. You know, I've, I've, without origami, I know, my life would be sort of uh, rather poor uh, alternative, because you know, most of, a huge number of my friends. I've made through origami and pe people in, who I never ever would have had the chance to meet without. So there's that as well as a worldwide community. And it's a very lovely community, you know, people are happy to share and people are, you know, it's, you feel like you're meeting old friends, you know, and we do. It's, it's a very small world and it's a very extraordinary world. So when you talk about um sharing and learning techniques at conventions. Mm. There are different mediums. So at a convention you can teach person to person. Mm. But of course there are books with diagrams mm. and online you see a lot of crease patterns. Mm. And more recently videos have emerged. Mm. So do you have a preference for a medium? Mm -hmm. well, I can only speak from my, my personal experience. So my, my personal experience was first of all from books. So I learned quite a lot, really, from from books in the. So this was this would be in the sixties and seventies, before the days of of computers. Well, people there were computers, but not nothing like to the extent today. So the, the, the majority of my early acquisition of knowledge was through books, uh, and then I joined the BOS and I met lots of people. That was the beginning of this sort of. Um, international, you know, friendship thing, um, and then so diagrams obviously for me are very important, and I don't for me the crease patterns. I can I have attempted them, but they don't really mean a lot to me. Um, partly because I, I suppose I don't fully understand them, you know. I understand the principle of it, but I can't really. I don't really have a desire personally, 
to remake some highly complicated thing from a grease pattern. There have been one or two things where I thought, I really want to make that. There's a chap in um, Japanese, but I think he's in, based in Australia, and his name is Gen Hagiwara. You've seen him, you've seen him. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he did some very nice pictures on his Flickr album, uh, together with some crease patterns. And I thought, I want to see how that goes together. And I've tried, and I'm not, frankly, they're not very difficult. I would never manage any sort of complicated insect. I would never manage a, a line design or a Kamiya design from a crease pattern. But I've got really any desire. I don't want to make those things. I'm, I'm more interested in the the, the simpler, more en elemental designs. You know, I particularly love the work of Jan Din at the moment. Beautiful stuff, you know, really wonderful. But it's not complicated. But it's got a marvellous sort of finesse, a marvellous, um, what shall I say, a life really. Mm -hmm. And it's so subtle, you know. I think there's a, for me, there's a problem. Like so many origami artists or people who are enthusiasts, should I say. I won't, I won't hesitate to use the word artist, really. They're so intent on having all the bits, you know, every single you know, character, every single physical aspect of their subject has to be reproduced. And it makes me a bit nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, I, I learned a lot when I, when I was studying painting. I used to I used to go to an evening class for painting, and I met, uh, finally, my teacher, in, uh, most, my most recent teacher, he, he said, look, forget the detail. When you're painting, you can't afford to look at minute detail. When you haven't established the basic concept, the basic design, this is a, a painting, not in origami. So when you're painting a portrait or a landscape, you don't concentrate on the glint in the eye or the eyelash before you've established the basic shape of the, of the, of the subject. Or you, or if you're painting a tree, you don't look at the leaves. You look at the trunk, you look at the, you know, the, the what shall I say, the skeleton, the, 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 the architecture before you. And he, he said, you know, yeah, he said, I don't mind detail, but not at the expense of the overall concept, of the overall composition, the overall design. And I think that pulls absolutely true for origami. So many young artists, young, young enthusiasts, should I say, because I don't really think they're artists. They, um, they're more interested in the bits than they are in the whole thing. And that's, you know, for me, that's... A, okay, I think when I was a, when I was a young enthusiast, I had the same problems before I realised that, that, that you know, the most important thing is the, the fundamental design, not the detail. And that, you know, that's where other people fall down. Have we, have we strayed from the question? I think we have a bit, haven't we? Oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> well, so the, the other thing, you asked about video. Um, yeah, it doesn't mean anything to me, really. I mean, I... I, I I would rather work from diagrams than I would from a video, honestly. But I think I think that a lot of people struggle with diagrams. Um, I mean, you either understand a diagram or you don't. But I think there's a lot of people who they need for some for some reason they need a video, don't they? They or they they. I think it's the, maybe it's the easy way out. You know, they they don't quite understand. What, the, the mountain fold symbol or that arrow which says tuck it behind and they want to be shown you know the actual paper in movement so I think it, I think it's very helpful for people who to learn more but maybe they're missing out if they're relying solely on video I think you need diagrams um, but something you know, I recognize that a lot of stuff that's made is not easy to put I mean I, you know I, I I make diagrams the old-fashioned way with pen and ink, and it's a pain. You know, it's really hard to do these things. And I, you know, I know full well that I've spent, you know, I spent, um, you know, months sometimes trying to perfect something, and it's not been very good. So it's not easy. You've got to be really skilled to make a good diagram. Even the uh, there's some good, some some good 
um, results in um, you know, modern diagrams with, with computers. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. And, you know, it's, still, it's another moment as far as I'm concerned. But for me, video, I think, it, I think, it's, I think what the work that you're doing is admirable. And I think there's one or two other, other people who make videos who've done do a very, very nice job. The trouble is there's an awful lot of dross as well. There's a lot of bad stuff. And, you know, I think it's, it's a bit naughty when people do it without consulting with the, 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 the author, the creator. They, they assume, oh, I, you know, I can do this. It's a little bit naughty. So, I, you know, I respect what you do very much, and I think, you know, I applaud what you do. But for me personally, I don't think it's very valid. Mm -hmm. While going through the question, you also mentioned Jian um, yeah. Ding, mm -hmm. um, who, who does these amazingly, um, in some ways, simple models, but with such expression and life. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, he, he always does wet folding. I don't think he always does, actually. But, but, uh, but a lot of it... Um, yeah, I mean, he's a... He also uses the famous methyl cellulose, which, I, funnily enough, I've never ever used methyl cellulose in my life. <laughs> Maybe I should try, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I know Jan does. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I think I think what he's done is remarkable. Yeah. So, um, so when you do your models, um, do you um, dampen the paper yeah. always? Not always. Mostly. It depends. I think when I'm at the stage where it's a fine example. Mm -hmm. uh, if I wanted, if when I perfected the design, when I knew exactly where I was going, uh, I would, I would then, yeah. Um, but I think it's quite, you can get quite a long way without, you know. The, this, you know, you don't. Have, it, people, it's a strange thing because people see it as a sort of, you know, a strange and a mysterious technique. It isn't really, and I think it's, it's a bit. I think the title of wet folding is a bit misleading because people assume they just dunk it in the, in the bath, you know. But it's, it, when it's, it's slightly more, slightly damp folding is the right, is, is a proper, descript, better description. Um, but I mean, so I experimented because of people in the BOS, Max Hume in particular. He, he picked it up from Yoshizawa. Um, and you know, I, I ex there was some, there's some phrase, some explanation in it, some Yoshizawa publication that I have got. He says, if, he mentions very casually, if you just lightly dampen the paper, you'll get a, a soft result. You know, and so I experimented with that, found I've got some really, really fascinating results. I don't think, don't think there's a great mystery about it. I don't think it's as difficult as people tend to think it is. And the main stumbling block that people have is that they overdo it. They put too much water on it, the paper just sort of dis disintegrates. So it's, you know, I, I found some lovely paper recently, well not really very recently, but I've used with, with great satisfaction a Fabriano paper, with quite heavy grades. And it's beautiful stuff to work with. I can't be doing with tissue foil. I cannot be doing with tissue foil. I can't be doing with anything to do with foil at all. Because it isn't really paper. Um, and I, you know, I always think that, I mean, one of the things that attracted me when I was a kid, when I first learned origami, was the, um, was the fact that it was, the material was there. I didn't have to look. And, you know, I was interested in um, craft activities of a number of kinds. Uh, but the problem always was that I never had all the required material. So there was an imposed on these books where it said you can make uh, things out of old matchboxes and cotton reels. And there was a list of things that you needed. And I only had about 25% of the things that you needed, you know, so I couldn't even begin. But that was never the case with origami because you just needed paper. And so I think that, and it was always there. And it was never hard to find a piece of paper. And I think, you know, from that, from that, that holds good today. I still feel the same way, the fact that, you know, I, don't, I just need that. I don't need to mess about. And so as soon as you start messing about with 
making making tissue for and methyl cellulose for the same reason, I sort of lose a bit of enthusiasm. But okay, I suppose wet folding and, and adding a bit of water, but that's not really very hard to find either, is it? But I get a bit, you know, also, I'm impatient, I suppose. Sometimes I want to get on with it, so if it's a lot of preparation. Okay, sometimes you have to cut a big square, I mean, that, that, I want to get on with it, you know. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I think that's it really. But I, I'm not interested in. As soon as this, people start adding things, I get a bit nervous. And I, you know, I want to keep it. The, the, the great attraction is that it's the simplest possible raw material that you can find, you know, and you don't need anything else. So that's why I'm a bit nervous about extras, you know. So talking about extras, um, how do you uh, feel, what does it make you feel like to have an exhibition with us here together? Oh, it's wonderful, you know, because, I mean, what we do is very different. Um, she's, she's very meticulous. She, you know, she's a, a real perfectionist, perfectionist in everything she does. And I'm not really, you know, I make do and mend if it's... And I think that's it crosses over to oil painting techniques because I, I like my paintings to look a bit rough and ready. I look, like them to look like paint. Um, and I think you know, again, I've often said that um, I think the important thing about painting and in origami is that it's honesty to the material. So it, we're making something which is paper, and it's got to be look like paper. If it looks too real, well, I think you know well, what's the point of that? It's a bit like the you know the the the, the, the realist painter it seems a bit pointless because you might just as well take a photograph. It much does a much better job with much less effort. Uh, so I you know I like the quality of oil paint. I like I like to see the brush marks. I like to see the imperfections. I like to see the same imperfections and the. You know the 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 evidence that it that it's paper that's being folded. Um, and you know again we go back to the grand old man Yoshizawa who I revere. You know, um, a lot of his things weren't very perfect, but it seemed to me a lot of the imperfections and the marks and the sort of indentations added in some magical way to the overall feel. So, you know, and that's why what I do differs very much from what Asya does, which is immaculate. You know, you've seen in the show the beautiful daffodils, which, you know, you know they're better than the real thing <laughs> in some respects. But, you know, it's, it sounds like a criticism, but it's not. So, any closing remark? Uh, oh, I don't know. I think... I think I think do what you want, you know, follow your nose, that's what I do. Um, I think another thing that, I mean, I, obviously you want your finished product to be very, as good as you can get, but I think a lot of people are a bit precious, a bit careful. And I, I, I think, you know, if people are making a living subject, you can afford to be a bit rough and ready, you can use a bit of brute force, I think Jan does, you know. Um, and I think very often if you're using heavy paper, you've got to use a bit of strength to get it working. So I think, I, I don't know, I, it's hard to give a, a, advice. But I think follow your nose. You know, uh, absorb information from what you see. That need not necessarily be, and I think it shouldn't be, from within the origami world. You know, from, you should absorb influence from your surroundings, what you're familiar with, what you're inspired by. Thank you. I do. Thank you. <laughs>